Chapter 8, The Receiving Ingress So I made it to the side building because I wanted to make absolutely sure nobody was going to be seeing me from the main road once I started using artificial light. Even a little bit of light attracts attention from an extremely long distance in the darkness. I was looking specifically for some kind of ingress, as usually buildings of the size of a loading dock or bicycling entrance. I needed an abnormal entrance that I could use my experience to get into without compromising all the existing infrastructure. After all, someone still owned this building even if it was just a bank overseas somewhere or whatever. It would be providing me safety, so I wanted to treat it as if it was my own. I finally see the beginnings of what I was looking for, which was an inlet portion of the structure. This would provide a line of sight block from the road by 25 feet or so. I figured to myself this must be the beginning of, sort of some sort of receiving dock. I walked a few feet in, and honestly it was absolutely pitch black at that point, and got my flashlight out finally. Before you answer a bunch of questions about this flashlight, this isn't some kind of holy cow $130 tactical warhead flashlight. It can't signal down ocean liners in 80 foot waves for that 100 year storm, blah blah blah. It's actually the opposite, sort of. I picked this flashlight out because it had a soft light that didn't blind me, didn't give me migraines, and took three AAAs, which meant the thing could go forever if you wanted to put lithiums in it. I could, it could really put out decent light wide enough, but not very far for a long time, and also had an added feature of including a laser built into it. A laser? A laser? Why on earth would you need a laser? Well, if you secure the light to something like a shotgun, then you have a shotgun with a laser, and you can alternate between which mode you want. For example, in my case, it turns out the cats really like it. It's a laser that lasts forever instead of the ones with a watch battery that only lasts like 20 minutes. This flashlight lasts forever on three of the right kind of triple A's. It also has a strobe, but it's a really slow strobe that doesn't give me seizures as I cycle through the modes. I think that function is absolutely absurd, so anyway, the flashlight isn't perfect. The price was right, though, and it does what I want, so enough about the flashlight. I click my flashlight on, and it turns right on, as it has a million times before. It has an almost ghostly matte glow flattening over the building's walls ahead. As I scanned the wall along that edge of the building, I was looking specifically for any kind of automated keyless entry panel. It didn't take long to find it because usually there are people coming in and out at weird hours to buildings like this. I shut my flashlight off. Most of my night vision returns and I used memory for the rest of finding where I was going. With my vision adjusted for the darkness, I carefully make my way over to the door and sit down. As I'm getting my phone out, I stretch my legs and hear something bonk and start to wobble. I reach out to stop the wobbling object and grab something bowl-shaped. I press the object to the ground and stop the wobble, then pick it up and set it closer to me. With that done, I forget about it for a minute and get back to my work phone. The first thing I need to do to start my research is figure out what the building's name is. I know I had driven by it before taking alternate routes for construction, but for the life of me, can't remember the name of the place. I know the map software takes up most of the battery, but I use it... First, I hit the uh, Find Me button to get the address. With the address, copy-paste the address, save it to the clipboard, and close the map application out. Use the address and cross-reference with the building listings and success, I came up with a name. Waste Trash Fiercely Recycling Center. That brought back a memory in the past of seeing the name and thinking how awesome it was. The word waste was on the left part of the logo. The green triangle with the arrows pointing to each next part. The word trash was on the right part of the logo and the word fiercely was on the bottom part of the logo. It was organized right clockwise if you can imagine and the words recycling center were to the right. Uh, one word below the other. <clears throat> it was pretty catchy and it would have taken me quite some time to come up with something that looked that cool but then again I always thought the recycling logo really looked cool so hey. Right around this time, I started to get thirsty and used the ambient light from my phone to figure out how to open one of the weird water bottles I'd got from the store. Once I got it open, I started to carefully sip from it. I separately put the wrappings and the heavy plastic cap in a different pocket and half absentmindedly and half obsessive compulsive poured some in the dish next to me and then I snapped the cap back down and closed the bottle. Put the water bottle back in my pocket and went back to my phone to search for password clues. 
through having the company name, I was able to pull up their old forum they had on a separate server from their company domain. They seemed like uh, really good people and built a community culture where they were all friends outside of work. I eventually found a post saying, I keep forgetting the code. I thought maybe the code would be right there, so I opened it up, noticing by now that my phone was starting to get into lower one-third of battery power. From my past experience, this meant I really had no clue how much power and time I had left. The message on the forum said the foreman in response to the post, if you keep forgetting the code, you need to ask the groundskeeper to let you in. This post had several upvotes and an answer highlighted. <clears throat> the original poster responded with a thanks, and there were several positive responses after that. I didn't see anything else informative, so I closed my browser out and shut all the rest of the apps off and put it back in sleep mode to conserve the battery and to collect my thoughts. That's when I noticed a sound next to me, a sort of lapping and plastic on concrete shuffling noise. Apparently, during my phone investigation time, I had made a new friend. There was what could only loosely be described as a cat next to me. Upon closer inspections, I determined it was almost more than a cat, as it was oversized in a few places. I suppose this is your place, I said to the cat, and it looked at me as if debating whether it would even really dignify me with a response. The look it gave me was as if to say, the monkey is talking again, what does the monkey want? So I left my hand hanging there and simply sat quietly. It was getting even colder and there were still four. No, that was being too kind, maybe five more hours until daylight. Even in, in a perfect world with the cat piled on me, it was going to be extremely difficult to survive this situation. The ground was cold, which wasn't going to help. It wasn't like there were pallets left out so I could get off the ground. I had knives, but I mean, please, I wasn't going to be making a fire here. I lacked the material, the means. It might attract the wrong, atten the wrong attention, so just overall a bad idea. It was going to have to be only me and Monster Cat, so the cat was going to have to stare at my dangling hand and finish the water and we'll figure out where to go from there. A few minutes had passed and my heart had almost finished sinking when I glanced out the corner of my eye to see the cat gone. Only to feel the cat shove up against my other side with a brrrr noise. It wasn't so much in the form of a question, but almost as a statement, as if to say, you are my friend now. I put my arm on the cat and got a few more burp burp noises as if to say, sorry if that wasn't clear, what I meant to say was, you are my friend. The message also seemed to say, and if you are mean to me, there will be consequences. That made me happy and even more respectful because the cat definitely had confidence and I liked that. Around the time of that thought, I felt that the cat was brushing something metallic up against my arm, like maybe it had a collar and the collar had a metal style tag. Was oversized cat trying to tell me something or just loving me up? I turned my phone on to possibly shed light to see what it was and the cat bolted. Crap, I thought to myself. Was that my only chance? Had I offended the cat? No, man. My next steps needed to show the cat that it was just a miscommunication and a mistake. I was trying to think how to project innocence and to show that it was my fault and that I took responsibility. I also needed to do something fast before the cat completely disengages. I should have been slower with revealing the light, so I set my phone down on the ground with the light on at the risk of letting the last one-third battery run out, and the cat slowly came back on its own pace, sniffed and pawed at it, and hovered in the light long enough for me to see the digits on the collar. I grabbed the phone slowly, sat up, stood up, punched the code in the keypad before I forgot the numbers. Upon Completing the combination, there was a the sound of a bolt on clicking. This was a mechanical keypad lock, and thus didn't require batteries. I opened the door and used the phone as the light to see inside. The cat rushed in like this was a normal thing, and I followed. <laughs>